Welcome, I'm Jill Bulldog, and I'm going to have a discussion on the metabolic pathway that we call glycolysis. Now this pathway is also part of a bigger pathway known as cellular respiration, and it's also part of another pathway that, that I don't have mentioned here, but it is called fermentation. So let's begin to describe glycolysis. Okay, so glycolysis. What does it begin with? It begins with a molecule that we call glucose. Glucose, as you probably know, is a sugar. This sugar has six carbons. So we're going to follow those carbon atoms, so carbons. The whole point of glycolysis is to take these six carbons, this is glucose, and break them up and to form two three carbon molecules. I'll just put MOL period, that's short for molecules, and these three molecules or three carbon molecules are called pyruvate. You'll also hear the term pyruvic acid. So pyruvate or pyruvic acid the same way. So we're going from a large molecule with six carbons and we're going to break it down to three carbons. So this is a type of metabolic pathway that's called catabolism. So it's a catabolic reaction. It's going to break down. When it breaks down it's also going to release energy in the form of ATP. So it's going to make ATP. Another thing that we're going to find out is that during this conversion of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid, we're going to lose electrons that were that originated in, in the molecule glucose. It's going to lose electrons. So we're going to say that glucose will become, let's see if I can rewrite that, will be uh, get the pens acting up, hang on for a second it's going to be oxidized there so these are the key points now if glucose is going to be oxidized what's going to be reduced because during redox reactions we have an oxidized molecule and something else that's going to be reduced we're going to have NAD plus and what will it be reduced to so NAD plus is the oxidized form is going to be reduced to NADH Okay, so let's use these terms to make sense of glycolysis, and we're going to go through that pathway on the next slide. Okay, as I just mentioned, I told you we're going to start out with glucose. So let's begin here. What you see here is a series of 10 enzymatic reactions. Wherever there's these arrows, right here, this is one enzym enzymatic reaction. The product is going to be the substrate for the next enzyme reaction, etc., etc. And it's going to end here with 2. This 2x means that there's going to be two molecules of pyruvic acid or pyruvate that's going to form. So I'm just going to clear some of these um, markings. Along the way from glucose to pyruvate, we're going to slowly extract energy. So it's a catabolic reaction. We're going to break it into small molecules and we're going to reduce energy. But what you're going to see at the beginning is that we're going to need to add some energy. So there's two molecules of ATP. That energy is going to drive this reaction forward. But that's going to be a small price that you have to pay. And at the end, because again this is 2x, we're going to get two molecules of ATP and another two molecules of ATP. So we're going to gain overall, our net gain will be two molecules of ATP. 
Now that's not going to be a really a whole lot of energy that's going to be made, but there's going to be another step, these redox reactions that um, I've discussed in a previous lecture, in which we're going to extract some electrons. So here's NAD+. There's going to be two NAD+, because remember this part, I'll explain it to you in a minute, there's 2x, and so that covers this area here. There's going to be two NAD+, that's going to be reduced, because they're going to rob the electrons from them, these molecules, to form NADH. These NADH are going to be teeming with energy that we'll use later on. Okay, so let's follow the, path, the pathway. Here we are with glucose. We uh, went through one enzymatic reaction. We've changed it to glucose 6-phosphate. Gone through a second enzyme reaction to fructose 6-phosphate. Now, third went to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now, notice at this point, we're going to go to the next enzyme reaction right here. This enzyme is going to split this large molecule that still has six carbons into two molecules. Here's one, here's two. Each of these two molecules has three carbon molecules. And we're going to have an isomerase enzyme here. He's going to be able to make one molecule into the other. He's going to be able to convert them back and forth. The net result is going to have an equilibrium. But we're going to utilize or use this glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate to drive the reaction forward, which means to the left here. As we deplete the glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, this isomerase is going to confer, convert this dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. So ultimately, we will have two glyceraldehyde-3-phosphates for every glucose molecule. So this reaction moving forward will happen two times, hence the 2x here. So again, let me start erasing this all because it's getting uh, kind of a little fuzzy. So we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. It's going to require two NAD+, that will be reduced to NADH. We'll go through another enzymatic reaction. One, two, three. The pen's acting up again. Three. And then finally, after the fourth reaction, we're going to get this uh, desired two molecules of pyruvic acid. So what just happened? What was the whole point of this? Again, the whole point is to extract energy. We want to use, we want to make ATP because the cells need ATP to make work, to, to convert one chemical reaction into another. So we started out with glucose and we broke it down into pyruvic acid. We, ex we had to put a little bit of energy first and we extracted energy at the end. We also uh, had to put in some NAD+, plus, some coenzyme, and that gave us some, ox some reduced form of NAD+, plus in the form of NADH. So on the next slide, let's see what, what, what gained, what went into the reaction, and what came out of the reaction. Okay, so I have two columns here. On the left, I have a column that's called inputs. So that's what went into glycolysis, and obviously the first one that we put in was glucose. And remember, glucose was actually converted from one six carbon molecule into two three carbon molecules that we called pyruvate. So we should start here. Pyruvate, there we go. What else did we do? I told you we had to, to begin by putting some energy. So we had to put in two molecules of ATP. So these two molecules of ATP were the driving force, and so we had to, ex um, to utilize some energy, and again, by wasting that energy, we converted that into ADP. And so we broke off an inorganic phosphate group. But in the long run, for when the glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate um, pa uh, past the glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, we actually made 
four molecules of a we had to put in four molecules of ADP and we gained let's see get four it's gonna look like a nine it's actually four phosphates and we made four ATPs so if we had to put in two molecules of ATP and we got out four molecules of ATP then really what we can say is the net gain of ATP is actually two molecules of ATP that's all we've made here we haven't made much more but there's going to be still a lot of energy trapped and so we're going to continue to oxidize glucose molecules what I mean by that is that the, the carbons that are held together in these pyruvic acids they're still teeming with a lot of energy. For instance, oops, I'm forgetting one here. I'm forgetting that what we also put in was 2NAD+. Okay, by further oxidizing glucose, uh, we're gonna release the energy that's still trapped in this NADH, as well as the energy that's still trapped in pyruvic acid. So these guys are gonna play an important role in the continuation of oxidation of glucose. So this wraps up the discussion on glycolysis and what I hope that you get from this lecture is the molecules that went into this pathway and how they were changed. How they were changed, so basically what came out of this uh, pathway. What I really would like you to continue focusing on are these pyruvic acids and this NADH because the next step that follows this usually is the Krebs cycle. This is the second part of the cellular respiration.